My name is Dr. Aaron Cato, and I'm an Extension Specialist in Horticulture IPM at the University of Arkansas System Division of Agriculture. Today, we're going to talk a bit about managing diseases in commercial blackberry production. And our main focus is going to be on building a fungicide spray schedule so that you can help prevent a lot of disease occurring in your blackberry. So let's get started. So there are very, a lot of different common diseases that we see pop up in blackberry, and I'm going to focus on the ones that we see in the Mid-South. So if you're in South Georgia or California or Florida or something like that, just notice that there'll be a, a somewhat of a difference of what you'll uh, observe, and probably you'll observe a lot more disease than we normally do. Generally, what we deal with, I would say, for the majority of middle America is anthracnose, botrytis fruit rot, leaf spots, orange rust, and cane and leaf rust. I'm going to go into each one of these in more depth and show you how to fit in some prevention into a spray schedule. But let's start off with a little bit of idea of integrated pest management. Whenever we think about of managing any type of pest, but especially disease, we want to think about the cultural practices as well. What can I do to, for more of a long-term approach? How can I set up my... Uh, my blackberries or maintain my blackberries in a way that are going to help prevent diseases from being more of an issue. And I would say the number one thing you can do is pruning. For a lot of diseases, they really love stuffy blackberries and they love for old dead canes to be around. So first, I would make sure that all of your floor canes, so after you pick your fruit, those are on floor canes or second year canes, make sure those are removed. So you get through with harvest, cut those out just as quick as you can, get them cut out, get them out of your planting and go burn them somewhere else. Um, whenever you're doing your winter pruning, so whenever you're trying to maintain the shape or uh, density of the planting that you have, you want to make sure to first prioritize getting rid of any damaged or diseased looking cane. So plant canes that don't like they're going to produce much, I would just assume that they're not going to and get those out. Uh, one thing to remember with a blackberry is if you if you got your uh, fertility program going right, then you're probably going to have an excess of canes. And so you want to shoot for something like four to six canes per plant. You know, sometimes you can move some canes from another plant over to fill in a gap to try to get your, you know, nice wall of canes on your uh, trellis system. So if you've got something like seven to eight canes on a plant, try to get rid of first the damaged or diseased ones. But ultimately getting down to that four to six cane number and thinning out is just as good as you can to still get the optimal amount of yield then you're going to get a lot less stuffiness in those in that plant canopy, a lot more airflow, and ultimately a lot less disease because a lot of these diseases really power to, or really need leaf wetness. And so the more airflow, the less leaf wetness you'll have. Also, be sure throughout the year to try to prioritize weed control. And so many of the growers in, um, in kind of in this region like to use things like landscape fabric or even start out with some type of plastic. And that's fine. That's going to get you three feet or so of a weed-free strip, which is what you would minimally want. But even then, about a foot on either side of that, you want to make sure there's no grass or other broadleaf weeds that are growing up to kind of create or decrease that airflow and also um, be a reservoir for many diseases, especially like botrytis. And so make sure you're getting yourself about three to five foot of a disease weed-free or not or weed-free strip around your plants. If you are using um, landscape fabric, make sure you're doing a good job of cleaning out your plant holes as well, because you'll see a lot of weeds that come up in the plant holes. And lastly, varietal selection is something we talk about for a lot of different crops. You know, what cultivar variety can I use that is resistant to these diseases, right? For the most part, in blackberry, pretty much everything's going to have a very similar set of susceptibility to the diseases we talk about. The only caveat to that is that Navajo, which is a commonly grown variety from the University of Arkansas um, for its late season producing ability for, you know, for the middle portion, portions of America, um, is, is going to be susceptible to orange rust, whereas many of the newer selections from Arkansas and some other places aren't susceptible to orange rust. And so at some point down the line, our older varieties were susceptible, and then we bred out of that one disease. And so we don't really see it on things like Wachita or Caddo or Ponca or Osage um, or N Navajo. We just don't see orange rust and never have on those. But Nav or Navajo, we definitely still do. All right, let's get into some diseases. The main one I would say um, that many people deal with is anthracnose. And this is one we got to put a lot of focus on, especially early in the season. Um, so you've probably heard about anthracnose if you grow any other type of crop, whether it's tomatoes or watermelons or um, even uh, strawberries. But what I'll say is that the, there's a lot of different species that cause it, and those are mainly caused by colial trichum. What we're actually dealing with here is a, a completely different species of fungus that's causing this. It's called Elsinovaneta. So it has a different life history. And so something to think about. 
Um, what happens is this fungus will actually infect the canes, the small green canes normally, um, or even leaves. Uh, it'll affect these canes. It will then begin to spread, and you'll see that on the top there on the picture on the left, you can see the small spots where it's infected. You can see some starting to kind of run like a line, and then ultimately they'll connect together and crack the cane. You can see that on the right. That's very excessive damage um, to a cane. And so you can see this cracking that occurs, um, and this is due to, uh, or and what this causes is a, this lower amount of nutrients they are going to move to that cage or, or cane or water. And so you'll see these shoots that just don't get as much fruit as they should. So it gives you a lot of overall yield loss. Um, what we know is that the majority of the spores are released in the early spring and they affect new growth, whether it's the new shoots on the floor canes that are then going to produce the fruit. And so what you'll see there is that their spores will infect these and then ultimately cause leaf spots that will then more spores will move off that and affect the fruit and you can get some of this dry cell or dry cracking of the of the truple. You can see that on the bottom right. Um, or it can even affect the new primocanes that are coming up and it can really hinder their growth and lead to a lot of cracking later in the year. So what we recommend for anthracnose beyond all the pruning that you should do is delayed dormant applications of fungicide. So that would be the first one we recommend. And so if you look on the picture on the right, this is a fluorocane. This is actually from 2023. And this is the timing that we recommend to make an application of a fungicide and specifically a fungicide containing calcium polysulfide. So we call this delayed dormant. What that means is it's not dormant anymore but it's as close to dormant as we if can possibly get it uh, without hurting the plants. Or it's really as close to the plants waking up as we can get it without hurting them. And so you can see we have a little bit of green growth coming out of our buds, but we want to apply it after we get the green growth and before we get to three quarters of an inch of growth because calcium polysulfide can hurt green leaf material, but it won't hurt it when it's really small like this. And so um, this timing can be pretty tight. And so that means what you have to do is be prepared um, usually in the winter, get your lime sulfur, your sulfurics, whatever contains calcium polysulfide, and it's labeled in your state for blackberries or cane berries. And then be sure to put it out as soon as you're seeing any green movement and before it gets to that three quarters of an inch. But also, especially for those who haven't done a great job of anthracnose in the past, you really do need to maintain it through the year. So things like Captain do a pretty good job or our group 11 fungicides. So pristine, quilt excel, abound, or cabrio um, are all going to do a pretty good job. Um, on um, anthracnose. And what we really would say is that pristine is probably the heavy hitter here and does the best out of all of them. And so I'm going to show you this slide a few different times. This is our fungicide spray schedule that we're building, right? And the first idea is that we need to understand when these diseases are an issue. And that's why we're going through each one. So we're adding to our little encyclopedia at the bottom there, anthracnose, all the way from delayed dormant through after harvest is when we kind of need to consider it. All right, next up, we have cane and leaf rust. And this is one we see really two different times a year. This word rust is very scary to people because there is a disease in blackberry that is a rust that's very injurious and can kill plants. The cane and leaf rust is not it. This is just a foliar disease. And when I say that, I mean, it doesn't, it's not systemic through the plant. It'll infect these leaves. You can see there on the top right, um, you have leaves that have these little orange pustules on the bottom. And then you look on the top and it's going necrotic, it's getting chlorotic. Uh, but ultimately, it just leads to those leaves being shed off, which can cause damage and cause yield loss and lead to less fruit. However, it's not as bad as something like the actual orange rust. This is just cane and leaf rust. We normally see is that um, any of the leaves that kind of hold on to plants, they'll tend to have these in the spring. You can even see on the bottom uh, little cane spots in the actual canes themselves where these orange pustules will occur. And then this can move around in the spring, especially when it gets hot and a little bit uh, humid or wet early on. Um, what I would say is that for the most part in Arkansas and the surrounding states, we don't see any issues with this in the spring. I would, even though in 2023, we are seeing a bunch of it holding on to especially things like Ponca that held its leaves very well. What I would say for the most part though, is that you can wait to, until you see these, you can scout for them, which is what is really good for IPM, right? Scout for these, you see the pustules, you're seeing a little bit of it growing up and then spray because it won't shed its leaves right away. You'll kind of get these leaves that are infected for a while before um, it really causes a lot of damage. So every year what we do is we get through harvest and we start looking for it. And we look for it early on as well. But generally we have other fungicide applications going out that are going to, um, you know, going to get this disease under control. But later in the season, we typically don't because we're not protecting fruit anymore. And so when you're getting into that, you know, August, September timing, really to keep a lookout for it, we see it every single year on plantings. And when you do see it, make an application of a fungicide to keep it from getting too bad. Because ultimately, if these leaves are shed, you lose a lot of carbohydrates that would normally go back into the plant and then go into your fruit the next year. 
So um, the fungicides to think about are any group threes like Rally or Tilt or group 11s, Pristine, Quiltex Cell, Abound, or Cabrio. And a lot of times what we recommend is Quiltex Cell, which is a group 3 and a group 11, especially because it's later in the year. And usually you want to save your Pristine to protect your fruit and more of your anthracnose protection early in the year. I want to mention orange rust, but I don't want to scare you too much. This is a systemic disease caused by a couple different species of uh, pathogen. Um, it used to be a major issue in blackberry. I would say it still is a major issue in blackberry, but just not the commonly cold or uh, grown cultivars for the most part. Um, we know that it's an issue in Navajo, and I'm pretty sure it's an issue in Chester as well. Uh, but for the most part, if you're using a University of Arkansas um, variety that was bred in the last 25 years or so, then you're going to be fine. Um, the big wary is here that you'll see these orange pustules. What ultimately you see are the on the top right where uh, the plants wake up and then the um, the shoots are just very clearly diseased. They're not going to produce fruit and at least to cult or ultimately to complete yield loss. We recommend is if you see a plant like this in Navajo, get it out of there. Uh, if you see a like plant like this in another variety, maybe give me a call or something and let me know because we've never seen it in any of the, uh, most of the other varieties. Um, but when you're starting to see them, get the plants out that are infected. And then I would uh, recommend applying a fungicide um, to kind of help it, the spores not move around as much. And so ultimately what we could say is maybe don't plant Navajo, right? But um, Navajo is a really good variety. A lot of people love the flavor and it actually produces well later in the year. So it opens up more market opportunities for many growers. And so um, if you're going to grow Navajo for your uh, market reasons, then I would say grow it. Just keep in mind that you need to be vigilant on removing plants and potentially putting out Rally or Tilt, Pristine, Quiltex, Alabound, or Cabrio. So your group threes and group 11s once again. So you can see here we have our cane and leaf rust, but I will say that first little block is usually when we do see orange rust. And so somewhere around that shoot six inches or so long, and you saw the picture from before, that's about when we start to see it. Um, generally, I've, I've heard they can come later in the year as well, but I've never seen it in Arkansas later in the year. The cane and leaf rust, you can see I got two spots for it. We see it uh, from dormancy all the way to bloom, and we see it from harvest and after, but generally it's that after harvest timing that's going to be the big issue. All right, botrytis fruit rot. And in general, you know, just fruit rots can be an issue on blackberries or decrease in fruit quality. Uh, botrytis is the easiest one to point a finger at and say, you know, this was caused by a pathogen that I know, which would be botrytis scenario. Um, and, you know, this is commonly known as gray mold or botrytis fruit rot. It gets on a lot of different fruits and vegetables. Um, and just like in those other fruits like strawberry, it infects fully open flowers. And so you may see a um, berry like you see on the right there and you say, well, this thing just got infected with botrytis. But actually, most of your infection is actually occurring on a fully open flower and then it goes dormant. And generally, once those carbohydrates really start to ramp up and we start to get these uh, fruit that are starting to get sweet, that's when it starts to occur on the fruit itself. Uh, botrytis can also occur on damaged fruit or leaky fruit, things like that, where it can get into a droplet, but generally it has to be some other issue that would already have kind of cold that fruit out from being a marketable fruit before it's going to occur. Um, one thing to note about botrytis is this is where pruning and getting rid of any excess material is going to be a, a, do you a lot of good because it overwinters on old leaves and canes. So, so the least lower amount of canes that are out there because you've done good in pruning um, the lower amount of botrytis that's going to come out there. And I think, I believe it also overwinters in weeds too. And so make sure you're getting rid of your weeds. So for management, what we're going to recommend is protecting your flowers or fungicides. So things like switch, which is FRAC 9 and 12, or pristine or cap 10 are all going to do a pretty good job on botrytis. Um, we especially see that in other uh, crops as well. So here we have our fruit rot section. That's where botrytis is going to fall under. But I'll say there's just a general idea of being able to protect fruit from many of the you know, different uh, funguses that can potentially lead to lower fruit quality. And what we see is that if you do protect fruit during fruit rot, you generally have less coals overall. All right. Lastly, we're going to talk about uh, a few leaf spot diseases. Um, you know, this can be multiple diseases that can cause these leaf spots. And I'll say that there's some idea, especially in areas of Georgia and North Carolina, where we have some resistance popping around, where which one it is matters to some degree, but we're still not sure that that's totally the case. It can be caused by Cercospora, Pseudococcus Cercospora, or Septoria, but ultimately we see them about the same time here. They're um, really not causing too much damage unless you let them go. And so when it gets hot and humid, you start seeing a lot of what you see on the right, which is this necrosis and chlorosis are causing these leaf spot diseases occurring, generally going to start at the bottom of the plant and move up. Once you start seeing it start to take hold in the bottom, you just need to apply the fungicide to kind of uh, whip it back into shape. So management, 
scout for leaf spot symptomology late in the year, and then apply a fungicide before it gets too excessive. Because just like with cane and leaf rust, it can def completely defoliate a plant, which can lead to loss of yield and ultimately hurting the plant later on. We'll take cell for sting, cabrio, bound, or tilt. So your group 11s and group 3s do a good job. And you can see this falling right in line at the end uh, of our schedule. Okay. So we have our full idea of what diseases that we're mostly going to be dealing with um, and also what timings we're going to deal with that. And so now let's add in the products that we're going to use uh, for a schedule. Let's build a schedule to kind of manage these. And so first thing I want to say is read the label. It, ultimately, it's up to whoever applies these fungicides to be sure that they're applying it uh, legally, which is what the label is telling you is how to legally apply it. These are all suggestions that I found for Arkansas. Um, generally, they're all federally labeled, but you just want to make sure and check for your state to make sure they're labeled for you. Or even if you're in Arkansas, a double check is, is going to be needed because really you need to read the label to be, a, or to be on label, right? Okay, so these are the, the products I chose, Captan, Pristine, Switch, Quiltex, Hell, and Sulfurix. What I'll note is that you can probably get away with just Captan, Pristine, and Sulfurix. Switch is what I would say is your next addition that you would want to do that really can ramp up your, uh, you know, fruit quality. And then Cooltex Cell is good to have on end because it can really do a good job of clearing up these leaf spots or um, cane and leaf rust that pops up. And it's usually easy to get and not too expensive because it is a row crop uh, chemical as well. Um, what I'll note is I have the max use there. I would say for Captan, I would plan on using all five applications. Pristine, I would say three, but you can potentially use up to four. A lot of people do. Switch, I would say probably just two to three applications is what you would use a year. Quiltex L, one to two potentially, and then Sulfurix just one. I think you can use like 28 gallons a year on Sulfurix, but we're not going to recommend that much. <clears throat> that should give you an idea anyways of what you would need to buy um, to be able to you know, fund a year of disease protection in um, Blackberry. So let's start off first. Lime Sulfur or Sulfurix, we explained this earlier in delayed dormant application. This one's easy to miss, and so be sure that you have this fungicide on hand well before you think plants are going to break dormancy. And so in Arkansas, in southern Arkansas, that could be this year was mid-February when it broke. So somewhere around February 14th to 17th, I believe, is when we started getting it to break. We applied it, I believe, about a week from then is when we got it out. So we had to be pretty quick, and it can be within a week that you're already past the growth timing. Next up, I would say if you have a lot of disease that you've been dealing with, I would put out another application of a fungicide on when your shoots get about six inches long, this is the shoots that are on your uh, primic or on your floricanes. So the shoots are going to ultimately have your buds on it. Um, so Captan is what I think would be baseline. Uh, Quiltex Cell, if you're dealing with a lot of cane and leaf rust at this time, or Pristine, if you have a, a lot of disease out there. So I could say that you know this would be your first Pristine shot if you needed it. Um, in areas where we have a lot of uh, issues with things like anthracnose and potentially botrytis, it's good to get this out here to try to limit the amount of movement, especially of anthracnose one to primocanes, because this is about when your primocanes are going to start coming out. All right, now let's get into our fruit rot timing right there, right? That purple block that's going to be from bloom all the way to harvest. Remember for botrytis, it's going to infect blooms. So you really need to prioritize fungicides that do a good job on botrytis during your bloom timings. Botrytis isn't the largest worry that we have here in states like Arkansas or Tennessee or Missouri, but some people do have worse issues than others, and some years we have worse issues than others. And what I'll say is that protecting flowers from any kind of infection is always a good idea. So switch plus captain, rotate it with pristine. Switch plus captain, rotate it with pristine. So there we have um, an MO4 plus 9 and 12 as our FRAC groups rotated with a uh, 11 and a 7. So you can see a really good rotation of different modes of action and really effective chemistries on many different diseases when we rotate switch and captain and pristine. And I would say that should be your plan from right when bloom starts all the way into pre-harvest. So, you know, maybe um, uh, two weeks or so outside of harvest. Then I would say, um, you know, get your pristine and then rotate in a captain and then one more pristine through harvest, and that'll get you pretty much all the way through. And so that's still protecting some of the late flowers, some of the fruit still trying to make it through, and that's going to get you most of the way through. And what we see is that when you have this kind of plan through your um, bloom to harvest, we just usually see a lot less uh, fruit rots occurring and a lot more or higher amount of marketable yield percent of what you're harvesting. Okay, towards the end, what I would say is once you get after harvest, one captain application, especially around pulling out uh, fluorocanes, isn't a bad idea. You can even consider a, a more systemic fungicide, something like Pristina Quilto Cell at this time. But I would say captain is just the bare minimum. 
and then just keep one hand a quilt Excel application or tilt or rally or uh, pristine or something in case you get cane and leaf rust and leaf spots because generally we do have to put out an application at this timing for those diseases. Okay. That's all I have. Um, what I would say is on the left side here, um, I would re really recommend everyone go to smallfruits.org and check out the Southeastern Regional Caneberry Integrated Management Guide. This is what we're recommending to people in um, you know, Arkansas and the Mid-South region because we tend to fall in line mostly with, with, with what they, the diseases that we have. And also I, I help make this guide um, for the entire region. We also have a blog. So UX, uaex.uada slash work blog. This is where we put out updates on what we're seeing here in Arkansas. We've already put out one update this year, I believe, on um, some of the uh, applications that we need to make on BlackBerry. And then we also have a podcast. So uaex.uada slash Southern Fruitcast if you want to listen to anything, um, which we've had a few people on about BlackBerry, different cultivars, different diseases, and different insect pests that we deal with. With that, I would say thanks. And if you have any questions, please seek me out.